Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Today we're going to be uh, evaluating integral zero to infinity of sine of ax over x dx. Now a lot of you have probably seen something similar. Um, it's a pretty common integral to evaluate on the internet, uh, zero to infinity of sine x over x dx. But um, I thought I'd show this one and show that no matter what you put in for a, as long as it's not zero, you'll still get pi over two. So anyway, uh, as per usual, we're going to create a function in terms of t. And this time we're going to, um, it's gonna be a little bit different than, than normal. Um, what we'll do is we'll create our function of t to be zero to infinity of sine ax over x, you know, same as, same as our original integral. And then we're gonna multiply by e to the negative xt. Um, and, and that's different than our previous two examples where we just replaced something in there uh, with, a, with a new variable. So anyway, that's our function of t. Um, using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, uh, we get that f prime of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of negative sine of ax times e to the negative xt dx. Um, that step's pretty easy to see. Um, now getting from there to there requires some work, but if you evaluate this integral right here, and I'm sure all of you can do it, it's about a 20 minute integral, uh, 10 if you're good to do. It requires uh, integrating by parts twice, and then uh, I believe it's called a Phoenix integral because you actually get back your original integral um, after integrating by parts twice. Uh, go ahead and do it and see what I mean. But anyway, the final result uh, of evaluating that integral is gonna be this right here, negative a over t squared plus a squared. But that's f prime of t. We want f of t. So integrating this right here with respect to t will give us f of t. If you integrate that, this is what you're gonna get. Go ahead and do it yourselves if you want, but I promise that's, that's correct. Uh, and so we have f of t is equal to negative arctangent of t over a plus c. And I forgot to mention um, earlier in the video, but we will note that if you evaluate f at some point b, um, meaning you're, you're plugging b in for t, and then you're letting b approach infinity, you're gonna get zero for the whole integral. I hope you can see why, because e to the negative infinity is zero. Anything times zero is zero. The integral of zero is zero. Also, uh, we sh I should have noted earlier that if you evaluate our function of t at the point zero, you will get our original integral. And again, I hope you can see why, because e to the zero is one. So where were we? I believe uh, we were on this step right here, moving on to the next one. So we're gonna use our initial values right there and plug them into our function of t. Um, that's gonna give us that zero is equal to the limit as some value b approaches infinity of the negative arctangent of a b over a plus c. And that'll give us a uh, value for our constant of pi over two. Um, I hope you can see why the um, the arctangent of infinity is, uh, is pi over two, but we have a negative arctangent, so it's negative pi over two. Um, adding it to both sides will give us c is equal to pi over two. So then we can arrive at a final expression for f of t, which will be f of t is equal to pi over two minus the arctangent of t over a. Now, plugging in uh, f, or plugging in zero for our function of t, um, gives us our original integral. So let's see what happens when we do that. We plug in zero here, zero over anything is zero. Arctangent of zero is zero. So um, the answer is pi over two. And, uh, and that's it. I thought that was pretty interesting that it doesn't matter what, you, what value you place in there for a, um, it's gonna give you pi over two no matter what. And we're gonna be using this result a lot in future videos, so I hope you enjoyed that.